Welcome back to the shop. So in our previous video we made a micro hot tent stove out of a paint can and a few spare parts from a hardware store. We did some testing and we, I personally found that it, it was going to be more of a hassle than it's worth. Um, it's super lightweight, it'd be easy to pack into the sled, but loading it with small twigs all the time, especially on an overnight trip, I think would be a pain. So I found another design for a bigger stove and a stove that I could cook on top of and I'm gonna build one of those today and walk you through the process. I found this design from another YouTube channel called Far North Bushcraft and Survival. He's got a really nice video on how to make the same stove um, which I'll link in the description. So let's get started. Uh, so as far as parts go we have this this six inch diameter stove pipe that isn't coupled together We have a piece of sheet metal. We have a couple of latches for the door. We have some a couple of washers, nuts and bolts. We have a pack of springs. We have a pack of hinges for the door. So this is 18 inches, 18 inches, on the money. All right, so we got that piece cut 18 inches. This is actually gonna be the depth of our stove. Now what I'm just gonna do is, now that I have a much more manageable, smaller piece, I'm just gonna roll it over the edge of the counter here. So hopefully, start to develop a small piece of sheet metal. Alrighty. That's one piece for our stove. And you can see that these, hopefully you can see this, that these edges are designed to fit together. So eventually when I fold these pieces, I'm hoping that I can snap the tops and bottoms together and then pound them with a hammer to get them to fit nice and tight. So that's how I plan to fit the tops and bottom pieces together. All right, so we have both uh, tops and bottoms of the stove cut, and we rolled them along the edge of the countertop to get them flat. So I'm gonna set one piece aside. And we're gonna grab this piece. This piece will eventually be the top. What we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to draw lines in this to mark where the you know, where the sides are gonna fold up, and then we're gonna place our our hole for our chimney pipe circular hole in the center here. So let's go ahead and get all of our lines marked down on the piece of paper. And on this stove, I decided to go with a three inch pipe. So I have an elbow here that I'll be using to, to measure the hole. Okay, so now we're gonna take a board that I have laying around and we're gonna cut a hole, three inch hole in it for our pipe. And we're gonna use this as a mold for pounding out the hole in the top of our stove. Make more sense once we get further along here. But for now I'm gonna trace that hole. I'm gonna use a 3 8 inch bit in my drill. And I'm gonna drill four holes in here because on a test hole I I tried, um, I couldn't 
my jigsaw couldn't quite keep close to this radius. It kept wanting to swing out further. So I think of the more holes I drill, I should be able to get from hole to hole. Easier without my circle starting to open up. Let's get our holes drilled here. Okay, so here's the three inch opening. This outside circle is a three inch opening for our pipe. We're actually gonna cut out this smaller inner circle with the Dremel tool. And then what we're gonna do is place that jig underneath this piece of metal. And we're gonna pound this excess metal in into, inside that hole to form the opening for our stove. This should give us a nice 90 degree bend all the way around here and give us a nice rigid opening for the pipe to fit into that should stand uh, stand up to time a little better than just a than just a simple cutout in the top of the stove here. It isn't pretty, but it should hopefully function. So now what we're going to do is take this jig, place it down on the workbench here. Put our stove top over the over the jig, and we're going to use the hammer, and we're going to pound this, this into this into the jig. Kind of see what's what's going on here. Bending that plane. So we finished cutting our opening, pounded it through that other piece of wood. You can see here. I get a good angle for you. Um, patience is a virtue on this because I've torn holes in. I ended up ripping the metal because I tried pounding it into place too quickly and so that metal ended up just tearing on me but I think it'll be just fine and pounding that through gives you a nice strong joint um, that's going to stand up to you know pulling this this pipe in and out frequently on trips and here you can see stove pipe fits in there quite nicely And so what I've done in the meantime here is I've drawn some black lines on the stove here, which will be the, the point at which we bend the sides up. And so this area in the center here is the actual width of our stove, which is 10 inches. And that 10 inches is centered across the piece of metal. So we have four and three quarter inches over from this side, and then over to this line, 14 and three quarter inches. Okay, so we got this all clamped in. I'm using a 2x4 um, 
I'm thinking I maybe should have followed the instructions here and ran this through the table saw just to get a nice square edge, given that this is kind of rounded. Um, I think it's going to be okay. I'm going to try it with the rounded edge. Might make it a little tricky when we go to try to plug the ends in and get a good seal, but we'll figure that out when the time comes. <laughs> I really don't uh, want to fire up the table saw. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. It's actually tougher to bend than you think. other side bent here. So this is what we have so far. It's a little warped and gangly. <laughs> But I'm hoping when we get the ends on it, it should straighten right up and, and also stiffen right up. So, All right, so we got the top and bottom joined together now. It snaps together real easy and you just pound it with a hammer to get it to fit nice and tight. So our next step is to make the inserts that will fill the front and back of our stove. I went ahead and completed the back because it's going to be... That one's a bit easier than the front, so I'll show you how to do the front. Um, but here you can see what we're doing. We have a, an insert that's in, stuck in an inch. There's an inch tab that gets folded over the side of the stove. And then I went around it with the pliers to kind of clamp it on to the, to the back of the stove. When we're all done and I know for sure I don't have to take the fronts or backs off, I'm going to drill holes here and we'll put pop rivets in all the way around to make it nice and secure. So let's go ahead and start on the front insert and I'll show you how we need to mark up the piece of metal to, to make the cuts. Okay, so here's the front insert. You can see I drew lines on here. Um, so what we have here is we have a, the actual size of the front of the stove here. So we have a nine and seven eighths wide by eight and three quarters tall. Um, and then we have a two inch overlap all the way around and these corners are going to get cut out. And then I have the hole here for the, for the, the front of the stove where the door will be. And you can see, I have these, these tongues that are going to get cut and then folded in so that we have rolled edges where I'm going to be sticking my hand in the stove. So I won't get my fingers cut when I'm trying to get wood in and out of the stove. Let's get this cut out here. Okay, so now that we got that cut out. Before we get all the, the sides folded up, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bend these tabs in that will give me rolled edges for the opening of the stove here. Looks should like nice and clean from the front of the stove. No jagged edges, nothing to get cut on. One thing I forgot to mention is that I went an inch and a half in all the way around the stove for my door opening. Now what we're going to do is bend this in all the way around to create like a tray looking thing. This, this I'm finding is definitely the most difficult part of the project to get 
these bends precise enough to in to slide inside of the the stove and form a nice tight seal. I did actually have to start over on the back once because uh, I made it too big. They're a little too uh, too accurate on my measurements and just slightly too big to fit. So. Okay, so our next step is going to be to fold over this, this inch long tongue that will get folded over the stove back on itself to clamp onto the stove. So this here is going to be our inch insert here, and then this is going to be our, our inch long tongue that will get folded over. So we need to fold on this line here, however first we need to transfer this line to the inside where I can see it when I'm folding. So I can do that by sticking my marker through corner here and transfer the line to the inside. There's our insert for the front of the stove. So now that we have the front of our stove completed, let's go ahead and get the measurements for our door and get that cut out and attached before we attach this to the front of the stove. I think that'll be much easier. So after getting some measurements off the front of our stove, I went ahead with a door that is seven and three quarters inch wide six and a half inches tall and I have these three quarter inch tongues that are going to get folded up 90 degrees and hopefully make the door more rigid and keep it from warping as much. I also have, you probably can't see it on the film, but I have a, a mark here that's centered across the front of the stove and two inches up. Here's where we're going to drill an inch and a half hole in the front of the stove for um, for the vent in the front of the stove. So let's get this cut out. Okay, so now that all that's cut out, we'll go ahead and fold these tongues up. And you notice on the end closest to the hinge, I have much a much steeper angle that should hopefully allow the door to open further without these um, tongues getting in the way. Well, you have a problem here. <laughs> these, when you bend this stuff, it's confusing as to which direction you need to bend it. So now, if I want this door to be left hinged, the hole's on the top. Um, so I think I'm going to do is, I think I'm just going to fold these all the way over and just have a rolled edge door. Um, and then we don't have sharp edges sticking out at us anyways to, to catch a knuckle on. Um, so I think we're just going to capitalize on this mistake and, and just roll these, these, uh, these tongues over all the way. Let's see how this is going to fit. There we go. Okay, so we're going to need spacers for the hinges. You can see these barrel bolts, the way I mounted these is that 
they they push upwards so when they're at rest if they were to fall down they fall down and stay stay pointed out at us so that we can grab them if we mounted them the other way uh, gravity would pull them down and keep them tight against the stove which would be kind of a pain to kind of get a hold of that so they should at rest stay poking out at us like that that's why we we have these mounted in this orientation we're gonna go an inch and a half on these spacers and fold them in half There, one spacer down, three more to go. Even though we have the spacer, you can see it's gonna, the barrel bolt is gonna, not gonna quite line up with that um, clasp on the other side. So what I'm, I'm planning to do is to just take a couple of washers and put them on top of the spacer. And we'll place this on top of that. That gives us actually the perfect amount of space to allow that to, to nest into the clasp on the other side. However, once I got that figured out, I found that my, my rivets slide. <laughs> they're, they're too small for these holes. So my next step in troubleshooting that, I'm trying to figure out what we were going to do to solve that problem. to get some washers and then the problem I could see with a regular washer is that once I get the washer in here everything's gonna want to slide around so we're gonna have a ton of play in this but I even with the washer in place so what I what I ended up doing was taking a countersink and countersinking a hole a uh, convex hole and getting a screw that fit that convex shape and you take your washer and set it in that hole and you drive this screw in with a screwdriver and that gives you, you know, a con not convex, concaved washer that'll auto center and keep this from sliding around when, uh, when it's riveted. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all my holes drilled and get all my washers uh, turned into concave washers. And we'll get the hardware attached here. our next step is is to get the door attached and then we'll put our barrel bolts on the door once it's attached I don't want to run the risk of getting those attached to the door and then the door gets attached slightly crooked and it doesn't doesn't fit into these clasps the door is fully attached now and we can actually open and close it now and I made the marks for the barrel bolt here just by making sure it was centered in 
into the clasp there. I made my marks. Just drill our eighth inch holes here. So one, one gotcha on this step is to make sure that your rivets are gonna clear your opening here. Because if your rivets bump into the front of the stove, your doors aren't gonna shut all the way. I have one that's just dragging on the edge of this. Just making it a little bit of a bear to get this closed. So I might have to trim trim this just a smidge. All right, so now we got both barrel bolts attached. This one fits real nice. This one's a little tight. So it'll take a pliers to the back side of this rivet a smidge and uh, squeeze it down so that it just clears the door. So when you're doing this step, just make sure that your, that your rivets are gonna clear the edge of the edge of the opening right here. There. Final step for the front door here is to create a kind of oval shape piece of metal that can be open and closed to adjust the draft of the stove. And we'll be using this screw with a spring to And I think I'm going to put a wig nut on the outside of the stove. That way I can kind of attach, I can adjust the, the tension on the, the door on the front of the stove here. So as the spring heats up, it's probably going to um, change tension. So I should be able to just twist it from the outside of the stove to adjust the tension. That's the plan anyways. So, so we got our damper cut out here. Hopefully you can see that okay. Try to center that over the hole as best I can, and we'll, we'll mark the hole for the bolt. So for the hardware here, for attaching the damper, I have a bolt here, and I put a washer over that, and slide that through from the back of the stove. Close the door here. I'm gonna put these like retainer things on there that the spring can kind of fit into. I happen to find those at the hardware store. Put that on first. Actually, nope. Damper on first. Then this retainer on. Another retainer and our wing nut. Front of the stove is complete. So I've opted to install a baffle in the stove for two reasons. One being it's supposed to cause more complete combustion. And secondly, and the most important reason is it's supposed to help prevent large embers from going up the stove pipe. Uh, the embers have to, it would be difficult for the embers to make its way around the baffle and up through the chimney. Um, and those embers can fall back down and burn holes in your, your tent. And if you're spending decent money in your tent, you're going to be angry when holes start to appear in it. Um, so what I've started with was mocking up what I want my baffle to look like, uh, with cardboard. That way I don't make it out of metal and then I have to remake it because it's time consuming to, to get this metal, uh, bent and conformed correctly. So I just grabbed a piece of cardboard and I kind of put my tape measure next to the stove and I decided that 11 inches was going to be, uh, I think, I think ideal for this particular stove and I go 11 inches, uh, 
from the back of the stove and then two inches down. And then I'm gonna have this angled part up front. It's gonna angle up. So I went ahead and traced out this baffle design onto the sheet metal. In the back, we, we have an inch long tongue that's gonna get folded up 90 degrees. We'll drill holes through it and rivet it to the back of the stove. We'll do the same on the sides, except these are two inches, two inches long. And we'll fold those up 90 degrees and rivet, rivet them to the side of the stove. The front here, uh, the first inch is gonna be folded back on itself. Um, to create a rigid edge in here so that when I bump the the wood and stuff into this we're not, I'm not going to get start bending the the front of this baffle um, quite so easily and then these tabs are going to get folded in 90 degrees and then I'm going to bend this up slightly to give us a slight angle on it then we'll rivet to these tabs from from the outside of the stove here's the completed baffle cut out and folded See how we angled this up. It's roughly 11 inches deep. I lost a little bit of depth by bending this up, maybe a quarter inch. It's like 10 and 10 and three quarters now. I'll slide it into the stove here and I'll show you how this is gonna work. All the way back and then all the way to the top. It looks like the left side got a little shorter, so I'll have to remember I to correct that when I rivet it in, but that's what we're looking at. So now let's mark the holes in the side of our stove. And we'll drill out the holes in the body of the stove, and then we'll trace those holes onto the baffle and drill those separately. That should be allow us to get the holes in perfect alignment uh, to rivet. All right, so we got our rivets in place all the way around, and this this is nice and sturdy. So the only thing I would recommend doing, um, and I'm going to do it on the front, is to cut an angle here along here so that you don't have the sharp corner that wants to hang over the edge of the stove. That'd be an easy thing to cut it to catch a knuckle on. And if you're out, if you're out backpacking a ways away, you don't want to get yourself into situations where you're have cuts and wounds, so I'm going to avoid all sharp corners. So here's our stove front. So now we just insert that into the front of the stove and we'll, we'll bend these tabs over. Like a glove. So full disclosure, I fitted this a few times so it everything's already kind of stretched and conformed correctly. When you go to fit this in the first time, it's definitely going to take some finagling to get this this to fit in the front of the stove. But yeah, I'm got pretty lucky here. This fits fits real nice. Now that we've completed riveting in the front of our stove, I went ahead and drilled two holes in each side of the stove. And I drilled a hole in, in the spots where it would allow me to 
to grab onto the tops and bottom halves where they overlap and place a rivet in there. I'm, I'm hoping that when this stove heats up, it'll stop it from trying to, to spread apart as if it were to warp or something. It would kind of suck if it were to split open in, in my tent on me because you guaranteed it would happen while you're sleeping. <laughs> Um, so it's kind of tricky to figure out which side to drill the hole on. It's kind of weird to, or difficult to tell. So I have one with a stake there. I'll just pop a rivet in there to plug that up. So our next step is to figure out how we're going to attach our legs to the stove. There's a lot of designs where they use a U-shaped piece of metal, uh, angle iron, and they use you know three or four pieces of angle iron, and they hinge it on a bolt here, and they can fold back underneath the stove. I wanted to come up with a design that used less less materials to reduce weight as much as possible. So what I ended up doing was using angle iron like in some of the other designs. But what I did was I cut these flat flat pieces of uh, sheet metal and sectioned it off. So we have a three quarter inch section here, three quarter inch, seven eighths, then three quarter inch there, two inches high. I drilled holes in them while it was still one piece of, um, a larger piece of sheet metal so it's easier to hold on to. And then you, you bend the piece of sheet metal into a shape like this and you kind of put the angle iron on the table to kind of get it to conform to the, to the angle iron. Then you attach it to the stove like this. And hopefully you can see this, but there's a rivet right here in the front and you just slide the angle iron in through the bottom and it hits this rivet and stops. Now we originally planned to put these these brackets straight up and down, but I'm thinking if I were to do that, this, this would be really shaky front to back. So what I ended up doing was kicking this back. I'm not sure you know what degree what the, what degree this angle is, but I just cut a little piece of wood here that allow me to reproduce this angle on all the other other legs and I'm thinking that this now that I'm angling the leg outwards the forces from front to back should transfer to the body of the stove rather than into the into the bracket itself so now you can kind of see the progression here start with this bend it set to the stove so I'm gonna do that three more times and I'll be back and we'll be pretty much complete so as far as the lig design goes, which was my biggest kind of question mark on this stove, um, it's a little wobbly side to side. You can see if I bump it, it kind of rocks back and forth. And that's with no wood in it, so we, I'm not sure how much, you know, how much weight uh, wood is going to add. I'm sure it's going to depend, but it's a, it's a little wobbly. I could maybe, you know, force these into the ground a little bit uh, on site and get a little more stability out of it. But front to back. It's it's solid front to back. It's not wobbling at all. So that's real. It's real sturdy. It's actually more stable than I was anticipating. I was expecting this to be leg designed to be pretty wobbly, but I'm actually kind of impressed with it. There you have it, the completed stove. I actually started recording this video last year sometime, and I've been sitting on it because I wasn't sure about the idea of using galvanized metals in the the hot tent. After thinking about it and doing a lot of research and talking to to others. The consensus that I'm finding is that you just do a couple of real hot burn-ins on it and you should be good. That'll burn all the galvanization off. Just do that in an open area and you should be fine. So stay tuned for the next video where we'll be doing the burn-in on this and the test and the boil video. So remember, I'm always here to help you separate the signal from the noise. We'll catch you later. Bye.